What does it take to see a city touched and a world changed? A people first changed by encountering a loving God. We celebrate because we wholeheartedly believe God deserves to be praised. We connect because we see that true life change happens in the context of meaningful relationships. We care because we believe God loves humanity. Therefore, we exist to reach people that are near to us, but far from Him. We are Christian Faith Fellowship Church. Welcome to Christmas Eve. Woo! <laughs> Tomorrow, we'll open some presents. What do you think they got us? I don't know. Do you think they're going to be good? I hope so. But we know what we got them. Yeah, but we can't tell them the secret. Shh. Our present for you guys is that we're going to sing you a song. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good tidings we bring to you and your kin. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Oh, bring us some thingy pudding. Oh, bring us some thingy pudding. Oh, bring us some thingy pudding. And all is good. And bring it right here. Good tidings we bring to you and your kin. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We won't go until we get some. We won't go until we get some. We won't go until we get some. So bring it right here. Good tidings we bring to you and your kin. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We all like a figgy pudding. We all like a figgy pudding. We all like a figgy pudding with all its good cheer. Good tidings we bring to you and your kin. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> right now, we got a video just for you kids. <laughs> yeah. What's your favorite part of Christmas? Dressing up the Christmas tree. When we get to have all the food. Getting Christmas presents. Getting out of my room, peeking the corner, and seeing where Santa Claus is. What's your least favorite part? Last year, the tree was fake, and we could see right through it. My brother cries because he's scared of Santa, but I'm not. What what kinds of things do you like to do in the snow? Play in the snow. I like to make snowmen. Make snow angels. Slide down hills. Snowball fights. And then I like to skate, but it's really hard. I can't even do it. Whose birthday is on Christmas? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is. Santa's. I mean, I mean, Jesus. And where was Jesus born? In a tent. In a stable. At a hospital. In Bethlehem. In Oklahoma. What kind of animals were there? Sheep and cows, horses, chickens, camels, pigs, elephants, bunnies and giraffes, sea grass, dogs and kitties. Why do other people get presents on Jesus' birthday? Um, because they've been good. Well, they gave presents to him when he was born, and we give gifts to each other. Because Jesus was the gift from God. What do you think is Jesus' favorite part of Christmas? Just seeing people happy. See how everyone's being kind to one another. Probably the missions for all the homeless people. If you could give Jesus a present, what would you give him? A puppy dog. A snowball. A little bear, and he loves it. I'll give him one of my toys. My love. My heart. Everything I had. Why do you think Jesus came to live with us? Because he loves everybody the most. Because he wanted us to be good and not bad. 
what God's son and that was what God wanted him to do. And that way he could fix out all the problems that were happening. He felt like we were more important than him. I think he loves us very much. Why is Christmas so special? Jesus was born on that day. Because you share it with your friends and family. It's a day where we can spend time and we get to give presents to other people. It's about sharing. We get to praise um, Jesus. I love it. Merry Christmas, everybody. Video fun. It was amazing. What was your favorite part? Um, I think it was when all the kids said what they were gonna give to Jesus on his birthday. My favorite part was when they asked the kids whose birthday was on Christmas, and one kid said Santa Claus and changed his <laughs> answer. <laughs> but right now, wasn't that fun, Olivia? That was fun, Abigail. But the fun, but the fun will not stop now. Keep watching and take it away, Gabby and Kennedy. Oh, thank you, Abigail. Didn't they do such a good job, Kennedy? They did wonderful. I love how they have so much energy. They hit every single note, and they wanted, and it made, it, it made me feel like I wanted to sing with them. I know. I'm a tad bit jealous a of their energy. Bit. But it's okay, because we're the quiet ones, and, and they're, they're the loud, loud ones. ones. So it makes sense. It's a perfect balance. It really is. But you know, as we were sitting here talking about our favorite Christmas memories, I want you to explain to the audience when, how old were you, and what memory stood out the most to you when you realized that Christmas wasn't about the gifts, wasn't about the valuables, but it really was about the birth of Jesus? I was like 11 or 12, and our family started a new tradition. And the tradition was, instead of getting a long list of, a long list of Christmas gifts, we had three separate categories, which were your wants, right. your needs, and your reads. And like, that really showed me, that really showed me that it wasn't about the gifts. It wasn't about what we got. It wasn't about how much we got, how much we had, and like stuff like that. It just showed me like the Jesus is a main part of Christmas. And if you took them out of the way, there wasn't there. There's not going to be a point of Christmas. Right. You know what? I remember that too. And at first, when it happened, I was not a happy camper. But I then I realized either. it's okay. Because as we said before, gifts is not about Christmas. Mm -hmm. Chris Christmas isn't about the gifts, it's about Christ. Yeah. You know, I think for me, my memory was about a couple of years back, maybe six or seven. And we were in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, visiting my mom's side of the family. And all 50 of us, yes, I said 50 of us, were together in one circle singing Christmas carols. Now what, didn't, now, what wasn't important, what didn't stick out, wasn't that we didn't know half of the words hmm. or that we were singing songs, I mean, and you know who you are, who didn't yeah. know the words of the songs, even though we had the lyrics in front of us. But we're not going to bust you out. That would be really rude. Never. It would be really rude. Mm -hmm. But what I understood was the joy that I felt in that moment of being with my family. And it made me take a pause and think, what was Mary and Joseph experiencing when Jesus was born? I'm pretty sure they're probably exhausted and tired because they just traveled far away and they've now just given birth. I'm pretty sure that a p portion of them were relieved. Like, ah, we finally did it. The child's here. We can relax now. But I also want to believe that in that moment, they also felt this over amount of joy, understanding that that child was getting ready to change the entire world. And that's what I remember when I think about Christmas. It's not yeah. about the gifts. But I remember the idea, or I think about the idea, that there was a child born for me. Mm -hmm. Way before I was even a thought, way before my parents thought about me, before I, my grandparents, my great-grandparents, my great-great-grandparents, or even a thing, God had me on his mind. Yeah. Before I was even a speck, he mm -hmm. had me on his mind. So with that being said, that's what brings me joy. And that's what I remember when it comes to Christmas. Now I know as you've heard us talk about this experience, you're probably thinking about your favorite Christmas memories too, or the memory when you realized Christ, that Christmas wasn't about gifts, but it was about Chris, Christ. I mean, his name, his name is in it, Christ Miss Christmas. So while you're thinking about it, take a moment and write in the comments your memories and when you realized what the point of Christmas really was, we would love to hear from you all. Now I know, as Abigail said earlier, this fun does not stop here. Not. About to keep this fun train going. Mm -hmm. Choo choo. We're gonna head over to our parents, Pastor Jason, Pastor Rhoda, and hey mom, what was your most famous Christmas memory?
Thanks, Gabrielle. I had to grab the candy cane because uh, mom didn't want to get up and grab it. But here you go, mom. I got the got the candy cane. Thank you, Dad. You almost hit yourself in the face with it. And we can't keep. Go ahead, girl. Keep twirling. Keep twirling. <laughs> Did the kids Is that back to your cheerleading days? <laughs> Go, Jesus! <laughs> Y'all didn't cheer for Jesus No, we didn't cheer for oh, Jesus back then. Oh, you went to a Catholic school. But we still didn't cheer for Jesus. Who cheer we for? cheered for the football team oh. that we were played. Okay. Didn't the girls do such an amazing job? They did. Job? I'm so extremely proud of them. They're just amazing, amazing, beautiful children. Yay, children. Yay, almost make me want to have another one. Woo! Y'all come over and do it again. Not. Uh, no, oh, okay. Almost. It's, it's, well, it's listen, you all, all <laughs> jokes aside, we are so happy to be able to be here with you this evening. As you all know, during this COVID season, we're not able to celebrate the way we wanted to. Okay. And this year, we were going to have our very first Christmas Eve service because we have our own building and wanted to be able to do that with everyone. But because of COVID, it may have stopped where we did the service, right. but it's not going to stop our service. So we were thinking and praying now and trying to figure out how to do this so that it would be be an opportunity to be able to share God's heart with you on this night before Christmas. And God just gave us the idea to just do it intimately from our family to yours. So we hope so far that you all have enjoyed this time of just being able to share from our family to yours. And we hope that you are uh, placing your your thoughts and your heart in the comments and uh, we're there commenting right with you because again we miss you and so this is our way of being able to let you know that we love you and we just so appreciate you being a part uh, of this um, service tonight and we hope that it's a blessing to your life now so far we've had Olivia and Abigail, they sang us a song That's right. and, and they gave, they showed us a Christmas video that was so funny and they, they were just cute. And then Olivia, not Olivia, I got so many kids, I forget <laughs> the names sometimes. Y'all know y'all names. <laughs> the other two, um, uh, Kennedy and Gabrielle, yes. they then came our oldest two the quiet and one. they just shared their hearts. I'm so proud of Kennedy. It's her first time in front of the camera right. and she worked really hard because she's normally behind the camera making all this stuff happens. Mm -hmm. But this was her first time in front of the camera because we wanted, again, to be able to show this from our entire family uh, to yours. And they did an incredible job just showing right. um, their their Christmas memories. Yes. And uh, we just think that was so incredible. But 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 from what we know, you got a Christmas memory you want to share. I do, Dad. I now, do before that. she shares it, I hope y'all enjoy uh, our living room. It kind of looked like Christmas threw up. But my wife and my children, they, they like all of this. If yes. it was me, I'd have just one little thing. <laughs> that's, that's it, because I don't like, but, but I hope y'all enjoy. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking. Go ahead, Pastor Rhoda. What's your memory? I have a memory. I remember when I was about 14 or 15 years old. Whoa, that was just a um, short sir, time ago. This can't gonna be something else, I'm sorry. Just a, <laughs> just a short time ago. <laughs> That was the year that our family decided <laughs> not to buy gifts at all. Okay. So no one received a gift from anyone. And what we did is that we sat around my mom playing the piano and we sang Christmas carols. And in that moment, we all gave a version of the meaning of Christmas. Yeah. or what we felt the meaning of Christmas was. And I might have been younger than 16, but in that moment, it took the moment off of giving gifts to each other, and it took the moment to the ultimate gift that was given to us. And that was the memory that I had as a young girl well, about Christmas. That, that's, that's cool. We, we learned really early that... Uh, Christmas wasn't about, um, you know, the gifts that we received, but that Christmas was really about uh, Jesus Christ. I remember my earliest memories of my mom taking us to Christmas Eve services. Mm -hmm. um, it was the it was a precursor. It was the thing that we had to do in order for Christmas to happen. And uh, I never knew the the depths of how much she may have struggled to be able to make those gifts and those things happen. 
but she always made it a point to be able to uh, do her best. And she let us know, I got you these gifts because she wanted to make sure that nobody else got the credit for the hard right. work that she had to do to make that happen. But she always made sure that my sister and I knew that the, the whole point of Christmas wasn't about the gifts we gave to each other, but it was about the gift of Jesus Christ. That's right. There was a book that I had, and I was responsible to read to my sister uh, the story of Christmas. Wow. Um, and, and so those are some of the things that we did that she made sure we knew from an early age. Yes, you may get a few gifts, um, but it's not about that. It's really about us focusing our moment in time of, of celebrating the fact that we got this tremendous gift from God um, in the form of um, the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So that's what I remember. Uh, but, but today I want to share something with you that's uh, pretty interesting. Can I have the candy cane now? Sure you can. A as you see, we have been passing the candy cane from one generation to the next and then now uh, to, to us. And I, I want you to look at this. There's quite a few stories that are out there about the origins and the beginnings uh, of a candy cane. Uh, some of them are true. Uh, some of them were stories that were added to the origins of a candy cane in order to have significance. So I'm going to tell you a story about the candy cane and hopefully the next time you look at it, it will help you to look at it in a different way. It will help you that when you see a candy cane, you're not thinking about Santa Claus, okay. but what you're thinking about is Jesus. If you look at a candy cane, a candy cane has been purposely shaped in an arc. Uh, and this arc, some people say, is, a, uh, is an example of the staff or the rod that a shepherd would carry. A shepherd who would have sheep would have a staff like this and if one of the sheep got away from him or was trying to go away a shepherd would reach out with the hook part of it and be able to pull the sheep back in so the candy cane is shaped like a shepherd's hook so it should remind us that when we see the candy cane that uh, that the great shepherd is that of Jesus Christ Amen. that came on this time at this at this day to be born through uh, 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 th be born through the Virgin Mary and then to be able to uh, give His life for us not that long thereafter. But if you take that same candy cane that you sometimes hang on a tree or you get from different people, you take that same candy cane and if you take the hook that's from a shepherd and you turn it upside down, what you have is the shape of a J. The shape of a J, shape of a J, <laughs> should remind us that this J would stand for Jesus. Now I know that's kind of corny, but it's a great way to help you remember this, and it's a great way to teach it to your children that as they are enjoying candy canes, as they are enjoying the candy that's of the season, that the candy of that season really is a reminder of Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, whether this is the real reason as to why the candy cane was created, we can't say for sure, but you can add your meaning to the candy cane. So in our house, it is a shepherd's hook which represents Jesus, our great shepherd, and then it becomes a J that represents Jesus. So both of the candy canes, whether it's up this way or whether it is down this way, represents Jesus. I could take it even a step further. You sure the red on the candy cane, because I'm a preacher. Y'all you, know that, right? Uh, you, you, you give me a hamburger, I'll preach about the hamburger. Two all-beef patties, special <laughs> sauce. No, okay, so anyway. <laughs> The candy cane, if you take it, the red that's on the candy cane would represent the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And the white that's on the candy cane would represent its, his purity and our purpose and our, uh, uh, um, our, our desire to live in a place of righteousness. Right. And so this season and all the things that you're thinking, find ways 
to be able to take those things and let them be a reminder to you and to your family that the reason for this season is not about all these other things, but the reason for this season is about Jesus Christ. And we need to make sure that we take this type of time and that we give our hearts and our minds and everything we have to Jesus. It's so important that during this time that you raise children yes. that know about the Christmas story, the real Christmas story, and that they know about Jesus Christ. Every year, as Kennedy told you, we get our children four gifts. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, something they need, right. something they want, something to read, and then we added something to build. That's right. But before they get any of that, we sit down and we talk about the story of Jesus Christ. We yes. talk about the story of Christmas. And they have to tell us something new that they learned that year mm -hmm. about the birth of Jesus Christ. Because it helps to make sure that we keep Christmas about Jesus. And so we want to be able to encourage you with that today, that in everything that you're going through, keep Christmas about Jesus. I know we're in a time of loss. We're in a time of a pandemic. We're in times of a lot of negative things that are happening and going on. But one positive thing that you can keep and make for sure is that you let your family know and you let everybody you know around you that this season and this time is about Jesus. Right. He is the bright moment, the bright spot in this season yes. that can help put a smile on your face. Amen? Amen. Now, what we want to do before we let you go, because again, we didn't want to hold you for a long time. We just want to share something from our family to your family. Is what we want to do is to receive communion. Mm -hmm. Now, right now, go grab some communion elements, whether it is uh, uh, so, you know, for us here, we happen to have some communion cups here that we grab from the church. But if you're at home, you can grab some communion elements. What does that mean? So for the liquid part of it, it could be some juice. It can be some water. Whatever you, that you have that's a liquid, it can be a communion element. Right. Grab that, and that's what we're going to drink. And then for the part that represents his body, you can grab some bread. You can grab a, 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 a slice of bread. You can break off a piece of bread. You can grab a cracker. You, can, you may have a cookie. Grab a cookie, okay. just something that represents his body because we're going to receive these elements together. Okay? So come on, family. They're going to come in now, and we're going to be, sit down Thank and you. receive this together with you. Uh, if you don't have those elements, hopefully you're going to go grab them now and we're getting ready to uh, receive this communion with you because we believe with all of our heart, you all know this at Christian Faith, we believe that the communion has a very significant place in our life. Not only is it a remembrance of what Christ has done, but it's also it helps us to stay in a place of health, helps us to stay in a place of wholeness. So we want to receive the communion with you. So if you have that bread, you can grab that communion element, which is your bread, and let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this piece of bread, this communion element that we have in our hand that represents your body. You, Before Father. we do anything else about opening gifts or celebrating with family, even in the limited capacity that we can, we want to honor you first because it's all about you. So we receive this bread element as a representation of your body. You can receive that bread or the communion element now. And last thing you want to do is grab your, your water element or your drink element that represents his blood. And we're going to pray over this. Father, we thank you for this element that we have in our hand that thank represents you, your blood. And we receive it as a token of our faith, thanking you for all that you've done. And that as we receive this, we are receiving what you did on the cross. Not only did your death provide salvation, but your death provided and resurrection provided for us a hope. It provides for us health in this humanity. It provides for us wholeness and healing. And we receive it now in Jesus' name. Well, I hope you enjoyed our our special Christmas Eve service from our family to yours. But before we let you go, we have a special treat 
Our very own Pastor Rhoda is going to uh, sing a song that's going to bless our hearts. And then uh, we'll say one final goodbye after that. So, sweetheart, you, you sound so beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yes, go ahead and bless us. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. That's my song, y'all. May your hearts be light. From now on, our troubles will be out of sight. Mm. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Make your Yuletide gay. From now on, our troubles will be miles away. Mm. Here we are, happy olden days, happy golden days are yours. Faithful friends who are dear to us, are near to us once more yeah. soon we all will be together yes we will if fates allow hang a shining star upon the highest bow and have yourself a merry now. We love you. We hope you have an amazing Christmas Eve and an even better Christmas Day. We'll see you Sunday. Bye-bye.